I've always had this thought, wouldn't it be cool if design software used CSS vocabulary and philosophy instead of its own made up, invented way of looking at layout and styling? Like, what if at the very core of the software, it was encouraging designers to think in terms of the way web browsers actually work, right? So CSS grid, flexbox, padding, margin. Well, it's not just a dream, that software exists. It's called PenPot and it's amazing. But do you know what the best part is? It's free and open source software. Take that Adobe. Big thank you to PenPot for sponsoring this video. They have an amazing team, they have an amazing piece of software here, and I feel really honored to get to showcase it in this video. Right now, let me show you why I've been enjoying PenPot so much for the last couple of weeks, and also why it has almost 30,000 stars on GitHub. Let's jump into the action. So anyone can visit their website and sign up completely for free, but it's not just free as in it doesn't cost any money, it's free as in it's open source, meaning you could self-host it. Uh, in other words, like if you didn't wanna just sign up here and run it you know, on their servers in your browser, you could install it in about 30 seconds with Docker and then own your data and self-host it yourself, which is really cool. We're gonna take a really quick look at that at the very end of this video. But for the time being, let's go with the quick and easiest route to get set up. Let's just sign up for an account on their website. I won't bore you with like registering for an account, but once you've signed up and you've created you know, your first project, uh, the editor screen will look something like this. So if you're used to software like Figma or XD or you know any sort of UX experience design tool, you should feel right at home. And this is a fully featured um, piece of software. I'm not gonna walk through like every feature with you, but just about anything that you would expect is in this software. You can create your own vector shapes with the pen tool, right? Shapes, text, imagery, icons, so on and so forth. Uh, so we're not gonna go over like a full design tutorial, but as a developer and as someone who, you know, works with CSS and JavaScript and HTML for a living, I wanna give you my perspective of why I am so impressed with this software. So let's start with something basic, like first maybe just creating a button, and then I wanna show you how you can use the dev inspect mode to move it into a real website. Um, so like we'll add it into this content area, and I've got VS Code open. So this is like a real world task, right? This is grounded in reality as a developer. So in PenPot, the first thing we wanna go over is the board, uh, the board tool. So this icon up here. Uh, you can think of this sort of like a frame in Figma. So like if I click and drag an area, then there's different size presets for like different phone examples or you know tablets or you could choose like right here 1080p uh, but it's not just like you don't have to use it just as a frame for an entire page let me delete that you can also use a board um, almost like a uh, a flex area or a grid container a flex or grid container so like if i create just a little board that's about the size of a button um, check it out i'll give it like a background of like blue for my button Okay, and then uh, I'll create a little text element over here. Let's say like learn more. Uh, let's make that text white. So there's my text. Now, if I click on this board and tell it to use flex layout. So over on the right hand sidebar, if I click layout and choose flex, check this out. Now, if I drag my text into that frame, that frame is a flex container. Um, so check this out, like it's top left aligned. But now like if I wanted it, if I click on the board again, I could say like, center vertically, center horizontally, and then I can tell it to fit to my content, and then you can just, just start giving it padding, right? Maybe we want like 10 pixels of vertical padding and 20 pixels of horizontal padding. We could also give it like border radius. Uh, let's go with like 16. Cool, now obviously you could add like uh, a drop shadow or a gradient or make this look actually nicer, but let me show you how now, if you wanted to move this into your, you know, your VS code, like your HTML and CSS. So if I just select my board here, I can click inspect. Now Figma recently created an introduced dev mode only to make it a paid only feature. So that kind of rubs me the wrong way. Uh, I mean, I could see making it available in like a team setting as a paid only feature, but the fact that even individuals can't use it without paying seems weird. So PenPot has dev inspect mode built in. It's free and open source software. This is awesome. Let me reset the zoom back to 100% and let's actually move this into my VS code. So again, with the board selected under inspect, this main info screen is where I spend most of my time. Um, it has the different things you're probably be looking for, right? Like padding, you just click on that and it's already copied into your clipboard. Like it's ready to paste, right? Or like the back, that exact shade of blue, the background color, you click that, it's already in your clipboard. 
uh, the border radius. You click it, you get the idea. Now you can also go into this code tab. Now sometimes this is amazing and this is the greatest feature ever. Other times you're probably just going to need to scroll through a lot of CSS and you're probably just going to want to like select you know, five properties and copy them. Um, because I don't think any design software can fully match um, the cleanliness of a real developer, right? Because in reality, um, PenPot is using actual CSS and HTML to display this. But in, I mean, realistically, it's actually just a button that's floating like in the middle of the world. So, you know, they're going to try to give it, like position it in terms of the body and you get what I'm getting at, right? Um, you're probably not just gonna wanna copy and paste every single line of code here. You're also gonna wanna give it your own semantic value. Like, should it be a button? Should it be an A element? Should it be a heading level one? Should it be a heading level six? So on and so forth. So again, this code tab is great. Sometimes it's amazing. You can just come in, get the five lines you need and get out. But a lot of times, I mean, this info tab is chef's kiss. This is perfect. Uh, so here's what I would do, right? You would just Let's just add it in our HTML. So I'd have an element. I'd say learn more. Let's you know give it a class. Uh, let's go into our CSS button. And then we don't even need to start to type out like background color. Check this out. If you go into PenPot, just clicking this background color in the info tab of inspect, just clicking the value, look what it puts in your clipboard. If I paste, not just the value, but it also knows like background colon. Uh, this is really cool. When I first saw this, I was so impressed. So then you just go through here, right? Like padding, you just click on padding, boom, it's in your clipboard. Um, you get the idea. I would also click on border radius, paste that in, let's say like color. I mean, you get the idea, you could do this yourself, but let's say like inline block, go back, preview it. Okay, so we would need text decoration none. Now let's see if we could find that in pen pot. We probably won't see it with the button as a whole selected, but if I actually click on the inner text that says learn more, aha, there we see, I mean, everything you could expect, right? The font, the font size, the line height, but here we see text decoration, none. So I can just click on that back in my clipboard, just paste it in my real world example, cool. Now I realized creating a button was not very exciting. However, now you're at least a little bit familiar with uh, pen pot, right? Like creating a board, inspecting an element. Now I want to get to the actual fun features. So now let's actually use Flex and Flexbox to its full advantage, right? Like having multiple items sit on a single row or a single column. You know what I mean. Now you know that you're in good hands with pen pot in terms of Flexbox and Grid because if you visit their official help center and then click on user guide and then in the sidebar click on flexible layouts. If you perform a controller command F for CSS tricks, yes, you can see that as they're literally explaining how their design software works, they're linking you to the OG CSS tricks article on Flexbox. And then, I mean, this just makes me so happy, right? And then if you go down to grid, uh, so grid layout is based on the CSS grid standard. I mean, we're dealing with design software that's referencing CSS and browser standards. And then again, they're linking to the CSS grid, the OG guide, I mean, right? Every, we've all scrolled through the flex box on CSS tricks and the grid tutorials. So, I mean, that's their frame of reference for this software. It doesn't get much better than that. Anyways, at this point, let's give ourselves a clean slate so we can forget about this button. It's not very exciting, right? Go back into design mode, delete the button. Uh, let me just get, give myself a clean slate in my empty main content area, right? So this area. Now imagine we actually want to create um, like a three column layout and let's have each one be like a feature call out. So it should have like, you know, a really light border and have like a big icon and then below that like a headline and then below that some description text. And there will be three of these sort of feature cards side by side, right? Three columns. So let's jump back into pen pot. I would start by creating a board for just one of these three feature cards. And then I'll show you how to get like three of them sitting side by side. So this is just the way I would do it. So I'd create a board. The very first thing I'm going to do is tell that board to use flex layout. And then outside of that board, I'll draw a headline. So I'll say like feature number one. And I want that to be like, uh, like big bold text, right? And then I also want a piece of text that's like, uh, like small description text. So like, uh, you need to see it to believe it. I'll have that be small, maybe a lighter gray. And then let's go grab an SVG icon uh, just from Bootstrap icon. So let's say like, you know, trophy or, you know, just any fun icon. So you'll just uh, select this SVG code into your clipboard. And then back in pen pot, if I paste command V, there it is. You can 
you know, drag it, make it a size. Let's make it like a fun, I don't know, orange maybe. Okay, so now we have, this is set to use flex layout. Now check this out. You can just drag your different pieces of content into the flex container. So I'll take my headline, you know, drag it, it snaps right there. I'll drag this, drag it in. Uh, now you're seeing that it's trying to line them up side by side. This is because by default, right, flex uh, will create columns. But with the board selected, if you choose this icon, then it's going to put them into rows instead of columns. Okay, then I'll just drag my icon into the board. Now what's really cool is because it's using Flexbox, check it out, if I wanted the icon to come first, I can literally use the arrow keys on my keyboard with the element that's selected and move it up or down. I don't know why that pleases me so much, but that's just really cool. Uh, so then, you know, I can move this around. That's just really cool to me as a developer uh, because this is how the web works, right? Like you're stacking elements, not everything is like absolutely positioned. I don't know. I'm just really impressed by this. Okay, so now let's um, let's have them be like centered horizontally and vertically, right? So you'd click on your board. This will center them, you know, along that axis, and then that one centers it vertically. Cool, and then we could tell the board as a whole to have maybe some border radius. Let's go with like uh, 12. And then finally, let's give it a really light border. So stroke, uh, I'll just use like a really light gray. See what that looks like, cool. Now before I duplicate this so that there's three of them, right? We wanted a three column grid or a three column flex box layout. Uh, before I do that, I wanna show you how to make this um, not just like an arbitrary, you know, like absolute width and height. I would actually want it to adjust um, like in terms of verticality, right? You don't ever want to like hard, I shouldn't say ever, but 99% of the time you don't want to give an element like height of 200 pixels. You want to let its own content dictate its height, right? And then the content plus the padding, you get what I'm saying, right? As a developer. So what I would do is with the board selected, I don't want this height value of 257. Like I don't want this, me dragging this to dictate the height. So instead what you can do is with the board selected, uh, down here for Flexboard you can click uh, fit to content, okay? And then I would just give it a little bit of vertical padding. So right here, uh, let's say maybe like, what does 40 pixels of vertical padding look like? Absolutely beautiful. Now I'd wanna do the same thing with the width as well. Like I don't want, you know, someone setting a specific absolute width to truly define how wide it is or isn't. So I would also use Flexboard uh, this fit content and then maybe just give it like, you only need a little bit of minimum padding um, because realistically its width is gonna be determined by how many per column. Cool, but now we have something that's very flexible. Now check this out. That's sort of our component for one. Now I, let's have a board down here and this is like a much larger board, uh, but this was where we would have like three of these sit side by side. So I would tell this new board to use flex layout. And now here's what's really cool. You could just start like copying and pasting this board into this board. But what's even cooler is if you right click on this and create a component, and I mean, this is very similar to other design software. Now, even if we have like three or four of these, if we make changes to the colors of just this one instance, they'll all be updated. So like now, if I, you know, copy and paste this, so here's my copy, I'll drag that into my flex board. And then let me just, you know, duplicate it a few more times. Like there's another one and another one. We'll worry about the sizing so that they fi actually fill up the full width. Like each one takes up a third of this space. But first, like if I changed the color of the icon for my component instance, it updates all of them, right? Or like if I change the, the color uh, for this headline text, you get the idea. I think that's really cool. Okay, and then I want each one to like use the full available space. So let me see if I click on one instance down here and then uh, click this button to use uh, width 100%. And then if I just do that for all three of them, you get the idea. Now, finally, we can add like column gap on the flex container, right? So if you click on the flex container, yes, perfect. This field's called column gap. Maybe we want like 24 pixels of column gap. Absolutely beautiful. So if this is how the designers on your team are creating your layouts, then you as the developer, I mean, you just come in, you have the inspect, um, you could click on your board and you're gonna see, oh, display flex, flex direction, uh, gap, 24 pixels. I mean, justify, align, I mean, it's all there. And then it doesn't get much easier than this. Then you would just click on one, you, know, you could export the SVG. Uh, exporting the SVG is as easy as just clicking on the icon and then down here in your HTML, uh, there you would see the SVG, you just copy that, boom, it's in your clipboard. Also for copying text, right? Like see where it says you need to see it to believe it. 
Uh, from the info tab, right here you actually see, you need to see it to believe it. If I click on that, well, you get the idea, it's in my clipboard. So the idea is that if the designers on your team are using PenPot, it's just like a lot of your work as the developer is already done for you. Things have already been laid out using flex, column gap, flex direction, so on and so forth. Now, before we bring this video to a close, I wanna show you the coolest feature that I've seen in PenPot, and that is grids, CSS grids. So we've been working with Flexbox. Let's take it up another level and work with grid. Check this out, let me delete this board. So we still have our component instance, and let me create like a new board. Like imagine we wanted um, like kind of a fun CSS grid type of effect here. So check this out. With this board selected, we're gonna click on layout, but we're now we're gonna have some real fun. Instead of flex layout, click grid layout. Oh my gosh, this is cool. So now if I click edit grid, let's imagine I want another column. So I can click this plus symbol here. Now it's you know a three by two. If we wanted another row, you can click uh, this icon. Now imagine we wanted this first cell to take up like like span too wide and too tall. Well, you can just click on this first grid area and then I would click on manual and then where it says one to two, so this is where it stops, this is the ending. So I would just change that to three and then in terms of the rows, I would change its ending line number to three and it's that easy. So now we have a CSS grid and then imagine if you just wanted to like use your feature call out, you could just like create a copy of that and then just drag that into the CSS grid and then again, I would just tell this to use, what, full height and full width. So full width, full height. And then when you could just create another copy, drag that into these different slots, give it full width, full height. Just paste in my clipboard. It's super cool. I clicked into that cell and it knew where I wanted to paste it, you know, and then just do that for this one as well. So let's give it full width, full height. Whoops, you can see because we gave each one of our callouts like a fixed, like 40 pixels of vertical padding, there's not really enough space. I'd probably just click on this board as a whole and just make it a little bit taller. Obviously the, the front end developer that gets their hands on this is gonna have to get creative to keep this perfectly you know, uh, resilient and, and, and never break regardless of how much content there is. But you get the idea. Let me just duplicate this a couple more times. You know, I would drag this one here, make it full width, full height. Make that one full width, full height. And then let's give it a like column gap and row gap. So select the board, that's the CSS grid container. And then is, I believe it's this field, is that? Yes, that's the column gap. Let's go with like 24 pixel column gap. Is this row gap? Let's see, 24, yes. Uh, and then you could also give the overall container like some padding along the outside. I just think this is really cool. Maybe make it a little bit taller. Uh, the developer would need to go through and actually make this super resilient, but you get the idea. This is a layout expressed in terms of browser standards and CSS grid. So now you as the developer can come along and click on this, click inspect, aha, display grid, right? It's literally one click away, uh, grid template rows, grid template columns, align start. And then what's really cool for me, I have a hard time keeping track of like the start and stop line numbers in grid. So this column, or I said this, excuse me, this grid area spans multiple cells. You just click on it in the inspector tab down here, grid column one dash three, one dash three for grid row. I mean, this is really cool. This is a developer's dream. This way the designers on your team are literally sort of doing your job. I won't say they're doing their job for you. You're still the programmer, but I mean, they're expressing designs in the same language and terminology and philosophy that you wanna work in. This is the coolest thing I've seen in a long, long time. Now, really quick at the end here, I promised that I would show you how to use Docker to self-host PenPot. Uh, so again, it's free and open source software. You are free to self-host it either locally or you know, you could go get like a $5 VPS and host it there for your whole team. The options are limitless, it's up to you. But from their homepage, you can just click self-host install here or up here uh, under developers, just click self-host and click install with Docker, and the instructions are super easy. So we're just gonna look uh, for the command uh, to get the Docker Compose YAML file. You could just visit this URL and save that file manually, but here they even give you like the curl command to do that. So like I'll just create a folder on my desktop, let's call it like self-host test, and then I'll open that in my terminal. 
Okay, I would just paste in that curl command. That's gonna download, right? Uh, so now in that folder, docker compose.yaml. So now we just need to execute it, right? They're gonna tell you exactly how to do that. They're gonna give you this command. Just back in your terminal, just run that command. Uh, I'll fast forward through the magic of video editing. Well, actually, I don't even need to. It's already done. So I tried this last night, so it didn't need to re-download the images. But if you have a fast internet connection, it should not take more than like maybe two or three minutes. Uh, but then the documentation says, you know, that will be running on localhost port 9001. So you just open that up. It's that easy. So now the account that you use to log into PenPot's website, that will not work here. This is as if like you're hosting your own instance, right? So like it's a whole new collection of users like. So you would just create a new user account. So that's the login form, but let's click create an account. Click through the welcome screens. And then, I mean, you can click create a draft or a file. You're right back in PenPot. Only now, I mean, this is on your local computer or you could host this on a $5 a month VPS somewhere. The options are limitless. This is the power of free and open source software. You can own your own data. You are in control. You can you know, move it from one server to another. You can have your whole team work on this, or you could just use the PenPots website and let them host it centrally. Either way, you can't lose. It's an amazing piece of software. Thank you once again to PenPot for sponsoring this video. Uh, I'm going to be using this software in my real life. I'm a huge fan of it. Thank you so much for watching the video until the very end and stay tuned for more web development tutorials.